Good morning. Welcome to Silver Lake and our Methodist Church. My name is Cameron Miller. I'm the pastor here, and it is such a great joy to be gathered here to worship with you on this morning. As we begin, I want to say um, a special uh, happy Mother's Day to all of uh, the mothers out there, um, to all of those who um, have hoped to be mothers, um, but couldn't maybe be uh, physically, uh, but we also uh, just lift up them, and we lift up those who have been mothers to so many people, um, their own kids and not their own kids. Uh, we just say a special thanks for you today as we remember um, the great love that you have shown um, to all of us. So as we begin, um, I have um, several announcements, and then I'll go ahead and open up uh, the floor here. So next Sunday is graduation Sunday, so please come out um, and help us celebrate our graduates. And if you have um, any graduates that you would like um, recognized um, in the service, uh, please make sure you let me know if you could go ahead and just uh, tear off the bottom of your uh, insert and write that down. Uh, if you told me two weeks ago in person and you didn't write something down last week, I forgot who they were. So uh, you'll have to write them down and let me know. I've got you, Jackson. So, um, but so that would be anyone graduating from from high school, from college, graduate studies, um, uh, trade schools, etc. Um, and anyone promoting into high school would be those that that we're um, looking to recognize. With that, next week is also Pentecost Sunday, um, and so I want to invite you to wear your red. Um, it really is fitting that Pentecost and Graduation Sunday fall on the same Sunday of uh, the bestowing of the Spirit on God's people as we uh, understand how the Spirit has been bestowed upon our graduates. And so um, I'm excited to, to have these two things coincide next week. So wear your red or your maroon in support of uh, Silver Lake and the Holy Spirit, uh, and we'll uh, just get to worship uh, that next week. Some other things um, coming up out in the, the lobby, the box for shoes is here. So um, if you have shoes uh, or you know of people who have used shoes with no holes um, that they're um, willing to donate, we have that. It will help support um, Soul Reason, who um, is doing some great work um, in Topeka. He's given... Um, over 8,200 pairs of new sneakers since 2016, um, and it's really just a great program. This is one of their um, big fundraisers where they can collect shoes, and then they get to sell them by the weight um, to help them purchase new shoes. So that is going to be here for um, roughly a, about a month. We'll have that box here. So if you know of someone, um, if you have any, if your friends have any shoes, you walk into a friend's house, you see a bunch of old shoes, you're like, hey, I know where you can donate those and help out some good people. Um, bring them over here to the church, and we'll get those um, going there. If you want more information, there's um, some in your bulletin, and there's also some additional information, I believe, kind of on the little welcome desk. Um, starting um, June 2nd, we're going to have a worship time change. We'll be moving from 10 o'clock to 1030. Um, this has um, been in consultation with myself, the board, uh, and our new pastor, um, Christine Potter. Uh, she is going to be appointed at two churches. So uh, our church, Silver Lake and Methodist Church, which will be the uh, majority of her appointment. Um, and then she will also be appointed to um, a, a kind of a non-traditional church um, that she helped start just uh, about three years ago um, at Cafe Kate's All in Sota continue to, to make vibrant ministry um, in both of these churches. Um, we're going to be moving um, our worship time to 1030, and they're moving theirs um, a little earlier to make sure that everyone has time to, uh, to get to uh, connect with, with Christine and get to spend that time together and get to worship God um, in the most faithful way that we have. So if you have questions, um, please feel free um, to, to ask me those. Um, I'd be happy to answer um, any of those questions as we look to this change. With that being said, June 9th is a special Sunday, um, so we will be having worship in the fellowship hall that day, um, and that service is actually going to be at 9.30. Uh, that is going to be, um, we're going to be live streaming uh, my ordination service from Kearney, Nebraska. Um, and so I really just want to invite you to come and experience that. Uh, you'll hear um, a wonderful sermon. Um, I don't know who's giving it this year, um, but they always bring in someone amazing for um, the sermon and get to see um, a group of people be uh, commissioned and ordained, um, and I'll be one of those getting ordained. So I'd really just um, invite you to, to join us, uh, to join me um, in this special day of celebrating the, the good work um, that God is doing um, in the lives of, of so many people around the world. And so I just want to invite you to do that. There will be some snacks throughout. You can kind of pop in, pop out. If you don't want to come till 10, that's all right. Um, if you just want to stay for a little bit, that's all right. But um, that will be worship that day. 
day um, with some light breakfast stuff included. Um, another thing that um, we have been um, asked to help with is Blacksmith Hall on June 30th um, is going to be hosting a fundraiser for Tegan, um, Alfred's um, granddaughter who is diagnosed uh, with cancer. Um, at nine years old and so um, we are in look for a few volunteers who would be willing to help bake some desserts, serve food, um, do some cleanup, looking for maybe four or five people. Um, Jenny Miller is going to be kind of um, uh, coordinating that so um, if you're interested in that you can let me know or let Jenny know directly um, and she'll um, get with you as we find out some more information on exactly what our needs are um, and exactly what we're looking for. Um, but uh, yeah if you would just be um, willing to help us out um, in supporting um, Alfred and Tegan and their family um, during this time. That would be uh, very um, much appreciated. Those are the announcements that I have. Um, I know that was a lot. You can find uh, most of those in your news from the pews as a reminder, but do we have any other uh, announcements this morning? If not, um, then uh, the next thing um, is birthdays and anniversaries, which I don't know of any in the coming week. So do we have any birthdays or anniversaries in the coming week? Well, congratulations. Pat and Andy Brewster will be celebrating their 45th uh, wedding anniversary on Saturday. Are there any other birthdays or anniversaries in the coming week? If not, then I invite you to rise in body or spirit and join in our call to worship. Come, quench your thirst in the love of God. We come hungering for a place in which we can be gently nourished. Be like trees planted by the streams of living water, ready to receive God's nourishment. Strengthen us, O oh God, to receive your blessed peace. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. I invite you to remain standing as you are able and join in our opening hymn, How Firm a Foundation, number 529 in the hymnal.
may be seated. Please join me in the unison prayer. God of incredible surprises, as we gaze into the clouds, remind us that we are standing on holy ground. Place our feet on the pathways of peace and hope. Draw our attention from the vision of the Lord rising to the heavens to be with you and help us to focus on the ministries that you have us do. Keep us ready and willing always to serve you all of our days. Amen. This brings us to a time together to share um, of our joys and concerns. Um, one that, that I heard is that there was an accident near, was it 86th and Humphrey last night? Um, and uh, one person uh, passed away after that accident. And so we pray for um, those who uh, were involved in the accident and for the family as, as uh, they grieve uh, this terrible loss. Do we have any additional uh, joys or concerns this morning? All right. Yeah, so um, prayers for Bob Kurtwood, um, who uh, was in an accident um, this week. Uh, and so we just pray for him, for his recovery, um, as he's still in the hospital um, uh, with some broken bones. So we, we pray um, for healing uh, for Bob Kurtwood. Do we have other joys or concerns this morning? Just if you'll keep my family in your prayers. My grandma's been asleep for about a week, so she could pass today, and it could be still several more days, but especially her daughters and her son, they're, they're just, they could use your prayers. Thank you. Yes, prayers for um, Ashley's grandma, Mary, um, her family, and uh, especially Mary's um, children as they um, prepare for uh, the transition um, from Mary's life from one life to the next. Do we have any other joys or concerns this morning? We lift up a special prayer again for um, all, of, all of the mothers, um, all of those um, who have, those women who have made an impact in our life, growing, uh, teaching us what it means um, to grow up and preparing us for the future ahead. And so we just pray for all of those who are and have served as mothers um, for, for each of us. If there are no others, then I'd invite you to join me in a moment of prayer. Holy and gracious God, we are reminded um, from your scripture that in, in our mother's womb, you knitted us together. You called us by name and you placed us um, here on this, war, on this earth with your love abounding within to show to the world the beauty of your creation. As we gather here um, on this Mother's Day, we are just uh, grateful for um, all of those times in which we have experienced the great joy um, of, of mothers in our lives, of um, our biological mothers, of those women who we consider to be um, our mothers, to those, um, to those women who have not been able to be mothers um, even after time and time again of trying. We just pray um, for your peace to be with them today, for them to know um, their love um, and that the love that they have shown each one of us um, has been reflected back into the world through us. Lord, we just um, pray this day for, for so many things. We pray for um, all of those who um, are awaiting uh, res test results um, to see what, what next, next steps might be. We pray for those who are... Um, going through the process of, of cancer and finding out um, uh, how hard that fight can be, to just pray for, for healing and strength to be with all of those um, who are fighting cancer. We pray for um, all of those who are experiencing illness and sickness at this time, those short-term and those chronic, um, those um, which impact us. We just pray for your healing and your presence to be with us. 
Lord, we just pray today that as we gather here that your Holy Spirit would fill this place and that we would be able to recognize the ways in which you are moving, the ways in which you have brought us together, the ways in which you have shown us your great love in this world. We just pray that um, today, that as we hear your word spoken and as uh, we sing your uh, praises to you and as we are reminded of, of all the wonderful things that you have done, that we could just give praise and thanks to you and have it be a transformation of our own lives. Whereas we see those areas in our own lives in which we have fallen short, in which we have missed the mark, that we can repent, give them to you, and pray for your forgiveness and move forward in a new direction, a direction centered and focused on your holy love. So God, we just pray all of this in the name of Jesus Christ who taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Our uh, next hymn, which you can remain seated for, is Faith of Our Mothers. The words will be projected, um, and it will be to the tune of 710 in the hymnal, but the words you will find on the screen. Our scripture reading this morning comes from the Gospel of John in the 17th chapter, verses 6 through 19. Please rise in body or spirit for the reading of the Gospel. I have made your name known to those whom you gave me from the world. They were yours, and you gave them to me, and they have kept your word. Now they know that everything you have given me is from you. For the words that you gave to me, I have given to them, and they have received them, and know in truth that I came from you, and they have believed that you sent me. I am asking on their behalf. 
I am not asking on behalf of the world, but on behalf of those whom you gave me, because they are yours. All mine are yours, and yours are mine, and I have been glorified in them. And now I am no longer in the world, but they are in the world, and I am coming to you. Holy Father, protect them in your name that you have given me, so that they may be one as we are one. While I was with them, I protected them in your name that you have given me. I guarded them, and not one of them was lost, except the one destined to be lost, so that the scripture might be fulfilled. But now I am coming to you, and I speak these things in the world, so that they may have my joy made complete in themselves. I have given them your word, and the world has hated them because they do not belong to the world, just as I do not belong to the world. I am not asking you to take them out of the world, but I ask you to protect them from the evil one. They do not belong to the world, just as I do not belong to the world. Sanctify them in the truth. Your word is truth. As you have sent me into the world, so I have sent them into the world. And for their sakes, I sanctify myself, so that they also may be sanctified in truth. May God add a blessing to the reading, hearing, and understanding of God's word. Amen. Amen. You may be seated, and if there are many children that would like to, um, now would be the time to head off to Sunday school. Prayer is a powerful medium. It is a direct line which is open to us as all times to God. It's like that phone that we see in movies, uh, that red phone that sits on the, the president's desk that you can be lifted up at any time and someone's always going to answer and respond immediately. When the time comes when we need to pick it up and with even out of dial, we have direct access to our loving God. Jesus throughout his life taught us the importance of prayer. Prayer for personal rejuvenation, prayers for healing, prayers for repentance and forgiveness, prayers for recognition and strength. Oftentimes, um, when Jesus would get overwhelmed or would be ready to do something great and big in his work, he would go off alone and pray as a way to connect himself with God the Father and center himself for the power of his ministry. And even while he was on the cross being crucified, he was praying in his final breaths for those who had killed him. The Gospel of John records for us Christ's final prayer for his disciples in the world uh, before his arrest and crucifixion. Throughout April, I had talked about a different John. We had gone through the book of 1 John, but today we're going back to the gospel that inspired that and to the, to the author of the gospel of John. So now I've told you earlier, when, in April when we talked about John, we were talking about John from 1 John. Now when I talk about John, it's John from the gospel of John. I know it's confusing, but um, they're all different Johns. So now um, the author of the Gospel of John has spent a long time going through the meaning and significance of Christ's life's work throughout his death, uh, resurrection, and the last nights with his disciples. While the other Gospels send a relatively short time on that last night in which Jesus spent with his disciples that um, we remember as the Last Supper and the beginning of his trials, John takes this moment to not only tell the events that happened that night of the supper with his disciples or uh, the, the trial and the incoming crucifixion, but he takes this time to boil down all of Jesus's ministry into a few chapters to share um, what the meaning is of Christ. So he takes five chapters to go from on this Thursday of Christ's, holy, uh, of Christ's final week. And he takes five chapters to tell us the many things in which um, Christ means through his work in the world. John does a good job of not just giving us the facts, but he gives us his his thoughts, his opinions, his ideas uh, of what it meant for Christ to do these things. And so this passage of John kind of outlining what happens on this Thursday night of happening at this meal with his disciples... This passage in which we heard here is the last thing in which before he moves off to the garden where he is then to be arrested and led into trial and ultimately be crucified. So the last thing that we have that um, John tells us that he shared with his disciples was this prayer. 
But you may not have have known it was a prayer. If we go back about six verses, it says, uh, this is the prayer I offer to you. And he begins um, this this chapter. Chapter 17 is really all this prayer um, in which Jesus has. He begins, uh, the first six verses or so are prayers in which Jesus offers um, to God for himself as he's um, seeing what comes next for his life, preparing, um, asking God to give him the strength that he needs um, to come um, to face his, his mortality um, as human, but his immortality as God. And then the bulk that, that we heard is, is what he prays for his disciples and what he prays for the world um, and what his hopes are for what his ministry meant. And then it ends um, with a few verses afterwards for the world, the way in which Christ is looking for the world to be redeemed um, by his love. And so this prayer becomes a central point, um, kind of the climax for John in this gospel. It becomes the point at which everything is laid out on the table. Here is the hopes for the world. And now what's going to happen shows the importance of what Jesus is praying for. So this passage of prayer in which Jesus is sharing is for himself, his disciples, and the world. And it is in this section that Christ is praying about his followers and their place in the world. He thanks God for the word in which they have shared together. He prays that this world may be transformed um, through the love in which God has shown, in which Jesus has shown to his disciples. And that all may know the truth of what Jesus has taught and that all may become under one rule of Christ's rule in the world. As today is Mother's Day, I couldn't help but think about this prayer by Jesus for his disciples in um, kind of this context of what it means um, for, for mothers and what it means for those of us who have mothers. Mother's Day can come with a mix of emotions. For some of us, it's a joyful celebration of our mothers, the person who birthed us, raised us, taught us, nurtured us, and cared for us. For others, it's a day of rejoicing in these memories, but also missing that we no longer get to celebrate time with our mothers. For others, it's even a day of heartbreak. For women who have sought to be mothers, but for one reason or another could not. And for those who have been hurt, abandoned, abused, um, and so much more by their mothers. It can be a day of mixed emotion, but it's still important to recognize those women in our lives, those of blood and those of non-blood who have made us who we are today, who have shown us what it means to love and who has made us, uh, who have made us know, who have made us know what it means to be loved. Jesus' prayer is really a good prayer for God's continued work in the world and for God's protection over all of God's people. While I'm neither a mom or a parent, I've had the privilege to listen um, to many mothers um, share stories about their children, and many children remember their mothers, um, and the privilege of having a wonderful mother who's actually able to be here today. It is clear that in Christ's prayer, that Christ, Christ, Christ's, that was hard to say, prayer reflects the desires of many mothers, that the lessons that they would teach their children would serve them well in life. That as they move out of the house and begin their own life, that they would be protected and safe. That all that is mine is yours. That they would continue to grow in life and faith and be the loving person in which God has called them to be. I can think back on the many ways in which my mom um, has prayed these things for me. I'm sure sometimes intentionally and sometimes unintentionally in her heart. Growing up, my mom taught me the importance of making time for family. She taught me what it looks like to be a faithful follower of Jesus Christ, and she taught me many practical life skills, practical life skills such as how to vacuum, how to do laundry, um, how to balance a checkbook. Uh, my mom, working in the banking industry for so many years, uh, when I was first opened up a checking account, I remember sitting at the table um, once a month with my checking account and going through and making sure that my balance matched the balance in my account and we knew where everything was coming from. And um, these, this way of understanding the world uh, was ways that have helped me to be able to um, understand finances in the future, make my wife happy by knowing how to vacuum, by um, being able to do laundry when I need to. All of these things are skills um, that our mothers teach us. 
and that prepare us for the future. As it was time to leave for college and move, um, and for Carissa and I to move into our first apartment when we were uh, when we were married, I'm sure that there was some sadness um, for my mom that I was leaving the house and um, that many of these same prayers that Christ pray, prayed were ones that she did that day. The legacy that Christ left with us is speaking to some fundamental truths in this world. That we hope that when it comes to those that we love, for them to forge their own path, that when they move on to the next adventure or they move farther away from us, that we hope and pray that the lessons that we taught, that the actions that we demonstrated, that the love that we have, that the faith that we share, that all of that will be passed down to bring about life and happiness in the midst of change. This prayer is really more than just a hope for the future. It is a recognition of what we are to do as well. Christ gave us an example to live by. And that when we follow Christ's way, and when we live into the essence of this prayer, that we create a space for ourselves to pray this on the next generation. As children of God, we are all blessed with unique gifts, talents, and graces that we get to share with the world. Wow, just got super lost. There we are. And when we remember the words of this prayer, we realize that they come from God and that they are cultivated through those um, who have come before us. We are called in this prayer to not allow our faith to be confined to the seat that we are in now, but it to be an aspect of our life day in and day out. As we take all that we have learned and we give it to God just as Christ has prayed for us that all that is mine is yours and all that is yours is mine. That I have been glorified in the presence of God. This is the path in which Christ paid for us, for us to become one with God in the world. To where we strive to get to the point where every action we take, every thought that we think, every desire that we have, all of that is God's. And all of God's hopes, desires, and promises that they are ours. And for us to show, be, and find glory in the love in which God has shared for us. Today we take a special moment to recognize this through our mothers and our, those mother figures in our lives. These people who have been a tangible example of what Christ was praying about on that final night of his life. Of what it means to pass down to the next generations the love, the desires, the passions, the knowledge to do work in this world that is good and gracious and godly. So today we give many thanks to these women that they have shown us a path that has been paved before us, one that we continue to live on, one that we will continue to pass down, that we continue to seek to be more like Jesus through our love and our action, so that all that I have in God is all that God has within me, and that we can live the life in which Christ has shown us is possible, through his life as he showed us what it means to be in constant and perfect love for each other and for the world. So let us today accept this prayer from Christ. To accept this prayer to not just be words that, that he spoke that day, to, to be an action for us moving forward. To be a way for us to consider how we are to transform our lives to live as Christ has called us to live. And on this Mother's Day, to live as our mothers have taught us, to live through the love in which God has shown them. So let us accept this prayer and pray it for all of those who will follow in our footsteps. Amen. As we come um, to this time now, we have this moment to share together in an offering with one another and with God. We get to lift up um, our gifts that, that God has given us and give them back so that they may be multiplied and expanded upon to reach more people than we could ever have imagined. To help people understand the love in which God has for us so that all that is God's can be ours and all that is ours can be God's. This is the moment in which we come together, and so I just invite you to consider the ways in which your gifts are playing a part in fulfilling this prayer in which Christ left for us. 
to do in this world as he has shown us and to prepare our lives to be um, people of love for God. And so I want to invite our ushers to come forward at this time and receive our tithes and offerings. Gracious and loving God, we lift up to you today these gifts for your blessing, for you to use these gifts um, to be in this world as you have taught us to be people of love and brightness and light. We just pray that these gifts would glorify your ministry and glorify your name and be multiplied to do your heavenly work. We pray all of this in your name. Amen. I invite you to remain standing and join in our closing hymn, The Trees of the Field, um, which is number 200 or 2,279 in the faith we sing, and we will sing it two times through. As we go um, forward today, a couple of um, things. Um, on our way out, make sure you stop by our photo booth opportunity and get some pictures um, to remember this Mother's Day. Get some pictures with your mom. Get some picture with your church moms. Um, get some pictures with, with everyone. Um, so there will be some people out there that I think kind of help um, take some pictures. And also, um, Ashley has made cookies for um, all of the mothers this morning. And so on your way out, uh, make sure that you get a cookie um, as a token of how much... Uh, uh, we, we care for you um, this morning. And so uh, the other thing, did I have another thing? 
I thought I did, but I don't know that I did. Um, well, join us um, for refreshments and time to just celebrate um, and be together in fellowship this morning. So as we go forth, allow us to go forth remembering this prayer in which Christ has prayed over us, so that all that is God's may be ours, and all that is ours may be God, that when we go into this world, that we can go forward with the joy and the peace in which God is giving us to shout with joy and be made and be let forth with peace and clap at the even that even the trees will clap at God's gracious name. As we go forth today, um, just be reminded that we are God's holy people doing God's holy work. You may go, uh, the service is ended. You may go in peace. Thanks be to God. Amen.